today I am here to wrap up the April audiobooks that I have been listening to, but through four audiobooks this month, so let's get started. I started with The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. This was narrated by Paula Wilcox. Um, this is a book that has been on YouTube a lot, um, and I kind of started listening to it probably about six months ago um, and couldn't get into it. Now I know why I couldn't get into it, this is a book which has a lot of different narration so I would say from the off I don't think it's the best book to listen to on audio. Um, but this is currently narrated by a girl called Grace who alongside her friend Chilly is trying to solve the mystery of one of their neighbours who has gone missing um, and from that point we kind of look into the street and the secrets that are held in the street and something happened in the past which we do flip back to every now and again um, which sort of unravels your idea of this perfect little community. Um, there's also touches of To Kill a Mockingbird in here with one of the neighbours being very much shunned from society and misunderstood by everybody apart from these two girls. Um, ultimately I found this quite boring, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't it wasn't for me really and I think I picked it up because everybody loved it so much um, but it, it sounds like a book that would have bored me and it did bore me. Um, there were aspects that I liked and at times I thought this was going to be a four star because there's nothing not to like, it's well written, um, the story's quite sweet and it has hidden depth to it as well. Um, in fact it's a little bit, and I know people have compared it to this, it's a little bit like Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury only dandelion wine blew my mind um, and I think dandelion wine explores much deeper darker adult issues um, through the child narration. The Trouble with Goats and Sheep does kind of do that but it's much more fluffy I think um, and kind of a step away from the sort of beautiful language that Ray Bradbury uses um, and ultimately the ending just let this down for me. The ending didn't really give me anything. In fact I was so disappointed by the ending that I felt the need to go back and just make sure that I hadn't missed anything. Um, it, it was just a bit of a nothing ending. And it's kind of difficult with a book like this I suppose because it's looking at community life um, and, and things in a community don't end, they go on um, and people go on. But I don't know, it just it was a long book and there was a lot of themes discussed. I feel like it could have done with possibly taking out a few elements and going more into the elements that were there. Ultimately it was fine, it was a three star for me. Um, I don't know whether I would have enjoyed it more on reading it. As I say there are a lot of different perspectives in this. Um, sometimes I was finding it quite hard to keep up with who was who um, and who had done what. So I think probably listening to this on audio was not the best thing. Um, but yeah, it wasn't necessarily for me. I was not that blown away with it. Um, then I listened to The Girls by Emma Klein. This was narrated by Katie McLean. Um, again, I wasn't blown or blown away with this one. Again, it's one that was on YouTube a lot a few years ago. This is basically about a girl who gets caught up in a kind of cult situation. Um, but I was kind of expecting it to be more culty. I know that sounds strange, but it, when I imagine cult, I imagine like girls who have been taken away from their families and they can't go home um, and, and this kind of imprisonment. Um, and that's not what this was. This girl does go home. Um, she goes off with her dad sometimes. But she is hanging out with these people who are in what you would call a cult, I suppose. They do have like a leader um, guy who they look up to and they all have sex with. And um, Ultimately I enjoyed this to start with and there is some really lovely language in here. But for me it just kind of dragged on a little bit again. Um, I don't know, I just about halfway through I kind of lost interest. Um, it, it's quite a slow meandering book which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be quite jam packed, I don't know. Also, I would say that Katie McLean's narration I really didn't get along with. Um, she's very, every word was very highlighted. Um, so that might be why it became quite draggy for me because everything was such an issue, you know, and everything was highlighted and, and dramatic and every word had a big exclamation mark on it. Um, so it probably took a lot longer to listen to than it would have taken to read and I might have enjoyed the pace more if I'd read it. I'm glad to have experienced it, but again, I wouldn't necessarily go crazy for this. Then I listened to my favourite audiobook of the month, which is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty, narrated by Caitlin Doughty. Um, again, I've seen this book around and I didn't necessarily think I was desperate to pick it up. This is basically a non-fiction written by a woman who worked in a crematorium um, and she talks about the process of burning bodies and preparing bodies for viewings. 
and I think what she tries to do in this book is very much make death a human thing, bring death back into our lives because she, she uses a lot of facts and funeral rituals and crematorium rituals that we've had in the past um, and the fact that you know other cultures and even us in history um, were much closer to death and death wasn't this thing that we kind of shoved to the side and let the crematorium deal with, it was something that we had in our homes and our lives and we were very much involved in the process. And she talks about the way that now, you know, death is removed. It's a clean, sterile thing. And she even talks about the fact that, you know, if a, if a family wants to view a body, they have to put makeup on and put, like, fillers in to bring the face out because sometimes your face sinks in when you die. Um, and, you know, they have to cover up all these bloating issues that happen to bodies um, and basically make bodies look like the bodies that are on crime shows, um, which is not the reality. This was so fascinating for me and it brought up some issues that I've never even thought about um, and it, it, it's so interesting and I would argue that anybody who would listen to this would decide to have a natural burial because the things that these bodies go through is just so unnatural and awful um, and also it's, it's sad that we have to do that I think. It's sad that death has been so sterilised that you know dead bodies are not something that we expect to see. What I loved also about this book is that it's very funny. You'd think it's what be quite dry but there are some hilarious moments in here like there's a day when Caitlin gets into the crematorium and something stinks um, <laughs> and she's like what's that smell and they're like oh that's Mr what's his name in, in locker five you know <laughs> he's just come out the river so he's a bit stinky um, there are some really funny moments in here and there are some moments where Caitlin very much narrates her feelings of going into this crematorium as a 24 year old and suddenly having to you know paint dead bodies with makeup and and sort of deal with all that situation and deal with other people's grief. There were parts in this where I kind of thought it, it might be construed as a little bit disrespectful to the bodies that she's referring to, or that not the bodies obviously, but their families perhaps. Um, and at the end, Caitlin does talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, the crematorium society as a whole is not happy that this book has been published. Um, she's sort of seen of, I don't know if you've seen that programme, The Magician's Secrets, um, she's sort of seen of a traitor to her trade. Um, she's kind of viewed as having given away the secrets that people shouldn't really know about um, but actually I think Caitlin very much manages to toe the line because though she tells you these funny quips about the families that she dealt with and the bodies that she had to do up the way that she wraps the story up in this conclusion that kind of basically is saying that death isn't this otherworldly thing that it isn't this magical hidden thing it shouldn't be this hidden thing um death is just natural and we should treat it as such and i think she very much manages to do that by making these stories kind of funny and looking at the normal side of things it's not something that we should view as a taboo subject or something that we shouldn't really talk about um so i think in that respect she manages very much not to be disrespectful and i would highly highly recommend this even if you don't think it's something you would enjoy I guarantee you would enjoy it. Then I finished with Stay With Me by Oyabami Ade Adebayo, I think is the way to say it, and this is narrated by Ajoa Ando. Um, this book, this book, I was not ready for this book. Um, it was shortlisted for the Baileys last year. Uh, so I picked it up when I saw it on Daily Deals, I think. I've had this in my Audible library for a very long time. For some reason it just didn't appeal to me. Um, but I'm really glad that I listened to it. So this is set in Nigeria. It looks at married life basically. And it starts with this couple who are having difficulty to conceive. Um, and because they're having such difficulty having a child, obviously this is set quite far back I think in Nigeria. I can't remember how far. I think it was in the 80s. Um, so there's a lot of pressure to produce an heir um, and basically it's decided that the woman is at the fault and that she's barren and, and useless so the man gets another wife um, and it starts from there and it goes on and it looks at just misunderstandings in relationships. There's also quite a strong undertone of feminism in this book because the woman, I can't remember her name for the life of me, but she very much is viewed as the one that's in the wrong and the reason that they can't have children and the reason that they're having trouble. But actually, um, I don't know how to say it without spoiling anything, but as we go on we realise that it's the man that has the issue um, and that he knows he has the issue, he's going to doctors and stuff behind her back, um, but 
he never says anything you know he never takes the responsibility off her shoulders um and it, ba it basically just looks at how that impacts their relationship um and it, it's quite sad because they're such a loving couple but there are these things that they just don't communicate with each other and it it tears them apart um they oh it was so good it was so good this book in the end i gave it four stars and it really really blew me away um i would say the first quarter i really didn't get along with um there were a few issues for me um I, this was the part where the second wife comes in and i find it quite in i found it quite confusing working out what wife was what um because I was listening to it, I didn't get a full grasp on names for a while, so that was confusing. So the chapters switched between perspective, um, and it, it wasn't a regular thing, you know. Every now and again, there was just a chapter from the other wife, or from the husband, um, and there was no announcement as to who was changing, and obviously the narration stays the same. Um, so to start with, I was finding it really difficult to get a grasp on who was speaking and what was happening. I would almost argue that the first quarter didn't need to be there but I don't know that might as I say just be because I was adjusting to the style of the audio. Um, I would also say I had no issues at all with Andoa Ando's narration. I thought it was really good um, and I loved her voices for the characters but what I would say is that this is obviously set in Nigeria. It is first person from a Nigerian woman and when her speech came Adoa Ando would use a really good Nigerian accent but um, the actual body of the book, which as I say was first person, was narrated in a British accent. Now, I understand to a certain extent it would be very difficult to narrate sort of 11 hours of book completely in a Nigerian accent. Also, I think narrating the body of the book in a Nigerian accent would make it difficult to define the speech. I get that. But it kind of niggled me because especially to start with it was very jolting um, and I found it difficult to connect with this character because I knew that I was hearing her thoughts in a voice that wasn't hers. I don't know, it kind of just bothered me a little bit. Um, but I could get past that and as I say I think it's necessary. I think if the narration had been done all in a Nigerian accent it would have got very muddled and confused. Um, but yeah it kind of grated on me to start with. But once as I say this book gets going it's fantastic. It's very very heartbreaking. There are some moments in here that are absolutely devastating and it just looks at a life falling apart or two lives falling apart and this marriage that for all intents and purposes should have been a good one um coming to blows and it, it's so good and i think so heartfelt because it's not your typical you know they're niggling at each other all the time and they hate each other the love between them is so strong there's just things that they can't overcome and that they can't talk about together and i think in part that's their fault and in part that's also the fault of society um and oh it was just it was just so sad so if you haven't read it yet, I would really, really recommend. Please let me know if you've been listening to any good audiobooks recently, and I will see you next time. Bye!